Good, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the session. Muy buenas días a todos y bienvenidos a esta sesión. Mi nombre es Frida y seré su intérprete. My name is Frida and I'll be your interpreter. I'll give this message both in English and in Spanish. Daré este mensaje tanto en inglés como en español. In order to provide language access, this meeting will have simultaneous bidirectional interpretation in English and Spanish. If you're bilingual, you don't have to click anything. But if you're not bilingual and you're on your laptop, please locate the icon shaped like a globe at the bottom of your screen, click on language interpretation, and then select English. If you're on your phone or your iPad, then locate the three dot menu in the upper right corner of your screen, click on language interpretation, and then select English. When you speak, do so at a moderate pace because the interpreter is going to be simultaneously interpreting everything you say. Al efecto de proporcionar acceso lingüístico, esta reunión contará con interpretación simultánea bidireccional al inglés y al español. Si usted es bilingüe, no tiene que presionar nada, pero si usted no es bilingüe y está en su computadora, localice el icono en forma de globo que está en la parte inferior de su pantalla, haga clic en interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione español o Spanish. Si usted está en su iPad o su teléfono, entonces localice el menú de tres puntos o que dice More en una de las esquinas de la pantalla, haga clic en Interpretación de idiomas y después seleccione Español o Spanish. Cuando hable, hágalo en español y la intérprete estará simultáneamente interpretando todo lo que usted diga. Antes de que me vaya, ¿alguien tiene alguna pregunta respecto a la interpretación? Before I go, does anyone have a question in regard to interpretation? If not, we may begin. Thank you. Thank you, Frida. Really appreciate you being here today. So again, I want to uh, welcome everybody. Um, today is a, a training with the State Council on Developmental Disabilities, North State Regional Office. Today is October 14th, 2021. So we are going to begin with um, some introductions. Um, I am Sarah May, and I'm the manager of the North State Regional Office. And I'm here today with my partner. Mary Agnes Nolan, I work with Sarah in the North State office. I'm the community program specialist in that office. So. Okay, so I'm, we go ahead, Mary Agnes. I'm gonna go ahead and start sharing my screen. So I'm gonna go off unless you wanna wait for a minute, Sarah, but I think we're good. No, go ahead. We also want to encourage questions. Um, we would like you to uh, post your questions through the chat box by utilizing the chat feature. We will address questions uh, at the end and we'll have time for questions. All right, so again, we say welcome. And this is one of our uh, state council's uh, training series. Today we'll be reviewing understanding the Lanterman Act, and you did meet um, today. I'm, you know, I'm Sarah May, and you met uh, Mary Agnes Nolan, who will be facilitating the training. There we are. There's our pictures. So today we have um, a plan to cover a variety of topics. We are going to cover the role of the State Council on Developmental Disabilities regional office role, law statute funding, the history of the Lanterman Act, and the consumer's guide to the Lanterman Act. Okay, so I'm gonna take it over from here. Um, I'm not gonna be able to read the chat as we're going through. So as Sarah said, we're gonna, we'll you know, take questions and different things at the end of the, uh, presentation because it's in webinar format. Um, and so as Sarah said, we're going to talk a little bit about the role of um, the State Council on Developmental Disabilities or often referred to as the council. And um, this is, state councils are established in both federal and state law with the uh, purpose of making sure that people with intellectual and developmental disabilities and their families receive the services and supports that they need to fully participate in their communities. So this training today is just a general overview, and this is part of our plain language series. So 
State Council is a federally funded agency, so it receives um, the funding from the federal level at the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services. And underneath uh, Health and Human Services, there's a whole bunch of different organizations. One of them is the Administration on Community Living, or ACL as the acronym, a, you know, Administration for Community Living, ACL. So underneath that is also the Office of Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. It was formerly known as the Administration on Intellectual and Developmental Disabilities. And that's why I ha um, have the Office of Underline, just because sometimes when you change administrations or different things happen, they tweak a little bit of the name. So um, you often will mostly hear about ACL, the Administration on Community Living. So then underneath that it are state councils on developmental disabilities. So there's actually 56 state councils uh, nationwide. Every state has a state council on developmental disabilities, plus the five territories and Washington, DC. So, so um, there's two different different there's two different definitions of federal or uh, of developmental disabilities. There's a federal definition, and then there's the California definition. So the federal definition is what the state council follows, and it actually um, serves people larger than the California definition, which is what the regional center follows. So the federal definition starts at age 22, California definition starts at age 18, which means that you have to have had the disability, you're either born with it or you have the disability before you turn that age. And in the federal definition, it starts, as we said, starts be, uh, before 22. And you have to have limitations in three areas that are listed on the screen. And the California definition is you have to have at least one significant disability with the, the five categories that are listed on the screen. So, the state council is also broken up into regional offices. Uh, we have 12 offices uh, throughout the state because California is so large. This is unique to California. Most other states only have one or a couple offices, but because we are um, so big that we do have 12 offices throughout the, the state. And the staff at these offices provide information and trainings to carry out uh, what's you know, listed in our state plan goals, which says what we're gonna do. So this training is brought to you from the North State Office, which we're located in Chico, California, um, which is in Butte County. So down at the, the, the Southern part of our catchment area, there's nine counties um, that we cover. So just, it's just Sarah and myself. Um, and you know, prior to COVID, and even actually during COVID, we still travel a lot to get information or supplies to, to folks. So I always say that because if you end up calling us, um, sometimes it takes a day or two for us to get back to you. So let's talk a little bit about what regional offices do. Our primary responsibility is educating the public about disabilities and the importance of full inclusion. And to do that, we help people connect, we help connect people to needed services and supports. We do that by providing information, informing about rights and different things that come up. Uh, we also oversee and strive to improve services and supports. And we do that by reviewing policies and practices. We identify services that may be needed but aren't available. And we also monitor legislation. So that, some of that stuff you don't really see us doing so much. Our headquarters office does a lot of stuff locally. I do like to, I mean, um, uh, for the state, um, but I do point out that we're not uh, uh, lobbyists. Uh, we look at, you know, legislation or we bring ideas uh, to the forefront to say, hey, you know, this might be something that would be good um, to improve services and supports for people who use services in California. And we also help people become part of their communities. So we, we do that by encouraging them to um, get active.
active with advocacy organizations. We educate the public, as we said earlier, um, and just get involved. Uh, you know, it's really important to share information and um, when you get information to pass it on. So the bottom line is, is we, we help people know about things. Sometimes things are, can be really complicated and confusing. And, you know, we try to take that information and put it into what we call plain language, into language that people can understand. So as I said earlier, this is part, this training is part of a, what we call our plain language series. So we try to take topics and we try to just give a general overview and give the information and language that people can understand, especially the you know, folks that use the services uh, in California. So the Lanterman Act is such a large topic. I mean, we could be talking for days if we were to talk about everything. So the purpose of this one is mainly just to give you an idea about what it is. The other thing that councils do is we help to improve service systems. We do that by talking to people, asking questions, collaborating with others. We often do a lot of projects together with other people and, we're, and agencies. And we're trying to do that to figure out how to make services better. Um, in a variety of ways. So as I said, the regional office primary responsibility is about education. Um, and then today we're just gonna give a general overview of the Lanterman Act. And we wanna make sure that you're aware of the, the wonderful resource that DDS um, designed and put together. I think it's been about 20 years. It might even be longer than that. Um, called the DDS, uh, the Consumer's Guide to the Lanterman Act. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and what's in that. So first, I'm going to start with um, Welfare and Institutions Code. So let's talk about that a little. So on the screen, you see a picture of, um, it looks like a whole bunch of encyclopedias. And that is, that is an actual copy of all the Welfare and Institutions Code from um, a, a, a judge, a local judge that I know. So in that, um, it's a big book about the laws in California. So there's 29 legal codes that are passed by the California state legislature. And in that is the, the Welfare and Institutions Code is part of, I mean, excuse me, the Lanterman Act is part of the Welfare and Institutions Code. So DDS also produces, um, a book every uh, two years uh, that can be put in is put in print. This is a copy from several years ago. I think it's January 2019. Um, but with the internet, it's so easy to go on the internet and pull down, you know, sections of the Lanter Lanterman Act. Um, but the Lanterman Act establishes an entitlement to services and supports, and it's one of the sections in the. Um, Welfare and Institutions Code that gives people with developmental disabilities the right to services and supports so that they can lead, live a more independent and meaningful life. So it starts in section 4500, <clears throat> excuse me, of the Welfare and Institutions Code. So a little bit of history. So there's a picture of Frank D. Lanterman, and he was a California assemblyman from 1950 to 1978. And he co-authored the Lanterman Petrus Short Act, and then eventually the Lanterman Mental Retardation Services Act. So I always like to point out when we get to the screen that, you know, the word mental retardation is very offensive to many people, but we have to remember back in the 1950s, that was the word that was being used back then. So that is the actual name of the act. Um, and then it also, um, you know, he also wrote the 1965 report for the, un called the Undeveloped Resource, a plan for the mentally retarded in California. So this is, Frank um, D. Lanterman was a longtime advocate for people with developmental disabilities and their families. And his, the reports that he wrote to this, um, resulted in the state of California accepting responsibility for people with a diagnosis of mental retardation prior to going into the state hospitals. So it basically was the start of community-based services.
So um, the work started with parents advocating, you know, to Frank D. Lannerman um, saying, you know, we want our, we don't want our kids to go away to a state hospital. So in the fifties, when children were born and they had a disability, the doctors would encourage the parents, usually the mothers, um, that, you know, your child has a disability, they're not going to be able to, you know, live a meaningful life. And, you know, the best thing for the, the child is to go into a state hospital. And the parents were saying, no, we don't want that. We want our children to be at home, but we need supports. So as I said earlier, it's a, it was the start of the community-based services. And it started with two pilot regional centers. Um, one was in LA and one was in San Francisco. And then in 1969, the Lannerman um, Mental Retardation Services Act, which at that time was AB 225. So the AB stands for assembly bill right here um, and 225. So that was, you have to know the year because every year the bill numbers change and everything. But um, that's what started the regional center service system. So again, it was sponsored, the bill was sponsored by Frank D. Landerman. And then in 1973, there was more bill language that was moved forward, which was Assembly Bill 846. And then eventually um, the Landerman Act became law in 1977. So I have a star next to the next bullet because it, this is really important that the Landerman Act, um, it talks about entitlement. It, it says that everybody who qualifies has the right to services and supports that enable them to live a um, more independent and productive life. So this expanded the eligibility categories um, for the, the regional center as well. And in 1979, there was a transition um, that services under the Department of Health then were placed with a newly formed department called the Department of Developmental Services. And ultimately they're who put together the, the guide that we're gonna talk about explaining this. So this is what it looks like, the Consumer's Guide to the Landerman Act. This is available to download from the uh, Department of Developmental Services website. And it's in both English and Spanish. So again, the Lanterman Act is an entitlement. So that says that everybody has a right to services. Um, it's need-based, not income-based, and it's unique to California. And I stress that it's need-based because what that means is, is uh, there's a lot of services that are, um, so the Lanterman Act is public money, okay? So there's a lot of services out there that you have to qualify by based on your income. You have to be low income to receive services. The Lanterman Act is unique and different in that it's an, called an entitlement. So you could, you could be somebody that comes from a, a family that you know, has more money than somebody else and they would still have the same rights that everybody else has. So anyone who qualifies for the Lanterman Act gets the services. So the guide is broken up into seven chapters. And like I said, you know, if we were gonna talk about everything in the Lanterman Act, we would be here for a few weeks. But um, this guide simplifies everything and it talks about what the Lanterman Act is. It talks a little bit about your rights, talks about the regional center's role, um, how services and supports you know, are defined the IPP, so that's the individual programs plan, how to get services. It also talks about disagreements with the regional center and given your opinion. So, you know, what is the Lanterman Act? It's about rights. So you have the right to services and supports to help you live the most independent and productive life possible. Okay. You also have the same rights as any other person. You have the right to dignity and humane care. You have the right to privacy. You have the right to participate in an appropriate prog program of public education. And you have the right to prompt medical care and treatment. And you have the right to religious freedom and practice. You additionally have the right to social interaction and participation in community activities. 
You have the right to physical exercise and recreation. You have the right to be free from harm. You have the right to be free from hazardous procedures. And you have the right to get services and supports in the least restrictive environment. So the Lanterman Act also says that regional centers have to give you information in ways that you can understand it. And this is what we often refer to as plain language. So we developed this PowerPoint. Um, we're in the, the North State, so that's far Northern's regional centers catchment area. And that's what the link that is on here. But we also realize that there's people on the, um, the call today that are from other parts of the state. So if you need help figuring out who your regional center is, we can certainly help you with that. Um, the Lanterman Act also talks about services and support should help you be independent, um, be productive, and be a member of your community and live where you are safe, healthy, and know what to expect by making your own choices. So I also want to stress on this that they also have to be cost effective. So again, the dollars that um, support the Lanterman Act are considered public money. So we have to look at that as what is the best way to spend public money. That's why we say it has to be cost effective. So the Lanterman Act also talks about the individual program plan and the regional center has to help you write this down and put it in what we call the IPP or the individual program plan in a way that you can understand it. So there's separate trainings that are out there that about the IPP um, and uh, Disability Rights, who's one of our um, federal partners, has a really excellent one on the IPP. But the main thing is, is that you gotta, in, the IPP should be written in what we call person-centered thinking and planning and making sure that you can understand it. It also talks about you know, what happens if you don't agree with the information that the regional center's saying? So you have a, a right to say, you know, hey, I disagree with what you're saying. Um, and you can do this. When you do this, it's important to do it in writing. And you can always have another meeting. You can meet with a mediator if you can't come up with a, you know, if the regional center and you are still disagreeing, you have that right to you know, meet with somebody that can help try to work that out. And then you also have a right to fair hearing. So um, that would be through the Disability Rights um, Clients Rights Advocate Office. So depending on where you live. So if you're in the far Northern catchment area, that would be um, Kimberly Candela is ours. And again, if that's somebody that you don't know, we can help you figure out, that out. You can either call your local state off, uh, state council office, um, or you can uh, call the regional center themselves and they'll get you that. Or so the Lanterman Act also talks about the importance of giving your opinion. Um, people with developmental disabilities must be involved and they have to have a say in what services um, should be provided. Um, and so ways to get involved and advocate advocate would be join a committee or a board. Um, we always encourage people to go to public meetings and um, you know talk about things like for an example, let's say the bus line, you know there's a whole there's people that you know live in a certain area and it would be beneficial for the bus line to go there. It's really important for the voice of people who use services to go to the meetings where they're talking about those services. So we always encourage people to get involved at your local level, as well as the state level. It's very important to write letters and make phone calls and um, just bring issues to the forefront. Because a lot of times agencies aren't even aware that there's a problem until somebody brings it up. And unfortunately, sometimes there's situations when people bring up information and by the time that they're so frustrated by the time they get to these meetings they come across really angry and stuff and it's important to start you know right away to try to to get involved and to advocate for you know so a need that you see in your community so and we always stress remember the saying nothing about um nothing about us without us 
So this, as we said earlier, this is a general overview. We could spend weeks talking about the, um, the topic, but if you want more information, you know, we encourage folks to call their regional center, call your local state council on development and um, developmental disabilities office, um, call Disability Rights California, the Office of Clients Rights, if you want more information. And then I have this slide in here. This is the link to the Lanterman Act that you can download off of the DDS website. As I said earlier, it's at both um, English and Spanish. So, and with that, I'm gonna turn it back over to Sarah. Okay. I'm gonna well, um, I want you to know that I, I attempted to put the links in the chat and uh oh i may have been successful anyway i will make sure that that those links are provided to you whether it's in the chat or we will email you the information i also want to um remind people that they can email me i did put my email in the chat and i will do it again it's, but it's sarah.may at sddd.ca.gov. Like I said, I'll put it in the chat again. But we want, we want to um, launch a poll and get some feedback from you before we open it up to questions. And Sonia is gonna help me with that. So we have provided two questions that you should be able to access easily and we would like feedback from you and we'll leave it up for just a few minutes question one is did you learn something about the lanterman act and there are two choices one is yes and the second option is no and the second question is are you satisfied with this training and the options are yes or no we'll wait a little bit give you opportunity. And if you can't um, answer in the poll box, you're also welcome to answer in the chat. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I believe that I was successful in posting the two links on how to uh, get your own copy of the consumer guide to understanding the Lanterman Act. And I'm going to put in my email again. If you have an interest in getting a copy of the PowerPoint, we'd be happy to provide that to you. And accidentally the poll closed early. So please go ahead and answer again. We're starting fresh here. Thanks so much. Oh, thank you. Oops. It stopped at four people. Now, now it's working. Thank you so much. We'll leave it up. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Now everybody's answering. Thank you. I think I might have accidentally hit something. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> so I'll, take, I'll take the responsibility on that. No worries. <laughs> Apologize, everybody. We've got about half of the people that responded, so we'll leave it open for just a few more seconds. Thanks so much. And some of you I see have answered in the chat, so that's great, too. We can Awesome. Mm -hmm. Somebody Thank says you. it's closed again. <laughs> but I don't, it's, it's still going. It should be still okay. Going. I was going to say, I don't think I did it that time. <laughs> okay. I was trying to put the information in the chat and then uh, uh, the links, and I, I must have hit something. Okay. All right, we'll go ahead and end the poll now. Just go ahead and write yes, yes, or yes, no in the chat if you would like. Um, and we'll go ahead and end the poll now. One second. So is this the is this the results? One second, I was just grabbing it. 
Okay, there's the results. All right. Okay. Well, looks like something was learned and we, uh, we provided you some good information today from, to most of you. Thank you so much. Appreciate the feedback. So now we just thought I, what, so, you know, and, and forgive me, you know, I realized that I did not introduce my, my colleague, Sonia Bingaman, and I am so sorry about that. So I'm, I'm going to do everything in reverse today. We're going to learn who my colleague is. I'm going to turn it over to Sonia Bingaman. Oh, thank you, Sarah. I'm just here as, as uh, you know, helping helping out our neighbor to the north and uh, sharing our Zoom Zoom account and being here for technical assistance. But I'm the Sonia Bingaman, the manager of the Sacramento Regional Office. We cover the ten counties around Sacramento, and I see a lot of folks from our region are on the call, so that's great. Um, we've never done a training on the Lanterman Act in our region, so so glad that Sarah and Mary Agnes were offering this, and we could share it together as well as those of you who join from around the state. So thanks for letting me be here and just wanted to repeat that we will, we are recording this and we will post it on YouTube and we will be emailing, Sarah will be emailing out uh, a link to the recording that you can share and, and view later. Thanks so much. Thank you, Sonia. Apologize for the late intro, but really happy you're here. So I wanna just open it up because We've got myself, Mary Agnes and Sonia here to facilitate a discussion. Does anyone have any questions? Um, I, uh, it took me many years to really understand how powerful, really how powerful the Lanterman Act is and how unique it is to California. And I know Mary Agnes stressed that, but we have known many of families who you know, decided to move out of California and move to other states. And it really hit home that the service system is very different um, in every other state other than, than how it is in California. Uh, California is the only state that has the regional center systems and has an, a law, the Lanterman Act, that entitles people to services. So if you live in other states, what most people report is that they have to wait years and years for services. There's long waiting lists. Um, it's not as a personalized approach to service delivery. You know, has does, is there anyone here that has experienced living in another state and has access services in another state that would be willing to share what it was like? <clears throat> Hi, Sarah. Hi, Aine, is that you? It is. <laughs> I'm so happy Hi. you're here. <laughs> yes, me too. Thank you. Thank you for putting on and hosting this training. Um, I started my professional career uh, working with uh, individuals with disabilities in Illinois. And uh, I do have to say I was working with, I was doing case management for uh, individuals diagnosed with severe and profound mental retardation, old terminology, that were being, um, um, as the state hospital, mental hospitals were closing, um, the state didn't know where to, quote, put these uh, individuals. And so um, it, really was quite an eye-opening experience moving out to California. And um, I started professionally here working with a, a vendor um, program doing uh, work services and work activity, old sheltered workshop as well. Um, and seeing supported employment and all the wonderful things. And then working for regional centers, the service coordinator here in Sacramento, it was, such a breath of fresh air and and really I think a lot of people do not understand what you just described uh, being in another state uh, the services and the quality and um, the immediacy of receiving services is so far behind the times so I always feel very lucky to be working in California 
And uh, yeah, I folks really don't quite understand the luxury of the Lanterman Act and what it does provide for individuals versus going to another state and you're just kind of left wondering what the heck. So I just wanted to share that, you know, coming from a different state and being raised in a different state and the differences that I've seen. So um, it's really wonderful service. It's a wonderful opportunity for folks who don't really get the opportunities in other states that are allowed here in California through the Lanterman Act and regional centers. So thank you, Sarah. Well, I would, I would actually like this opportunity to make sure that everybody knows um, exactly who you are, oh. uh, what your role is, and how yeah. important it is with Department of Rehabilitation. Yes, thank you. Um, yes, I'm Amy Stahl, and uh, I work for the Department of Rehabilitation. I have for me 25 years, not to age myself, but I was a vocational rehab counselor for about five, six years, and then um, uh, promoted to the position of community resources development specialist for uh, certain counties throughout the state. Uh, I, I work with um, eight other specialists, and one is on the phone as well, Christine Kazwadi from SoCal. And our role is multifaceted, but um, we work with uh, standing up vendors to provide services. We are the liaison between vendors, and that includes the supported employment vendors and our community partners, such as regional centers, SCDD, other advocacy groups. Um, um, and the specialists really where we're kind of jack of all trades and to be masters of all as well. So we are the resources, we're the resource for the vendors, the field staff, um, even other sections internally um, pull our little bitty section that stands up statewide services in, in into the mix to make sure that what's happening internally also meets the field needs and um, our participants needs. So um, yeah, that's a little bit <laughs> about me and the specialists and the Department of Rehabilitation. Um, we work jointly with our regional centers for CRPs, community rehab providers, also referred to as vendors, um, stand up support employment. So it's a dual certification process. And, um, you know, so specialists, we really get in there with the vendors and make sure it's our role to make sure that those services are being provided to the best quality. And our expectations are pretty high for, for our vendors. So as specialists, we really work hard with our vendors and make sure they understand what it is that they're doing. So the clients, participants get, get the best quality of services to help them achieve um, CIE. So, yeah. Well, thank it's you, a Amy. Fun <laughs> job. It's a fun job. So, well, and I think what's important, Amy, and thank you so much, and Christine, thank you so much for joining us today. And I think what's also really important is as Amy is talking about her role and the spirit of collaboration and how um, here in the North State, uh, you know, well, in California, we really focus on working together. We, you know, we strive to have what's called in a way, and I'm using, it is a real term, but I'm using it for the sake of what my message is a no wrong door approach, which means as, as users of services, um, it is important that you have an expectation on all of us, all of the agencies and professionals to work together so that I'm just gonna see, I see my friend, Terry Morton, on this call. So let's just say Terry calls me about something, but maybe I'm not the expert of it, but I know that my friend Amy Stahl is at Department of Rehab. We, we are striving to have a service system in California that's the backbone is the Lannerman Act, is about working together and facilitating resources and services so that families and people are not left 
with you know no assistance. We want to be able to refer people to the right door. We want to make sure that there's no wrong door. And that has a lot to do with the spirit and philosophy about the Lanterman Act and about community services. We must all work together. And I can honestly say, um, Amy, and I think you knew this, and we also have Sonia. There's three of us in the room that ha have worked in Illinois. <laughs> oh, wow. And, uh, and have experienced service delivery to be quite different. And um, I know, we all know that, that nothing is perfect. We don't live in a perfect world, right? So even though sometimes we still get frustrated and maybe service delivery or coordination isn't perfect, we must remember though, we have something valuable in California that isn't anywhere else. And that's why Mary Agnes in her presentation really strives that we need to protect the Lanterman Act. We need to make sure that it's always protected for, for people in California with developmental disabilities and their families. We don't ever want to be like the other states. So we got to hold on and protect it and pay attention to legislation and updates that impact our service system. And I just, Terry Morton, I, we have a, a, a wonderful person on today. And Terry? Yeah. It looks like we lost Sarah. <laughs> yeah, we did. You're on mute, Sarah. I got kicked out for a second. Terry, where'd you go? I'm here. Uh, Terry, Terry, yeah. would you be willing? So Terry is um, a, uh, a, a board member for Far Northern Regional Center representing Tehama County. And so she uh, is an example of a person who's in leadership. Terry, would you be willing to, to just share a few words about what it's like being on the Far Northern Regional Center Board of Directors? So you can listen to all the people and then they can, what there, then you can report what, what you say on the board. Plus also you can stay in the motel when we get a chance to get, get out of the, Red up area. Then we know. Then we can see all the people too. So, but you have a very important role. You are part. You are one of numerous board members that make decisions about Far Northern Regional Center. And so, using again what Mary Agnes reminded us of is nothing about us without us. And you are in a very important role and you are a decision maker. And that's a big responsibility. Yep. Thank you for serving our community yep. and watching over Far Northern Regional Center service yep. area. You're welcome. We really appreciate your leadership. Yep. Does anybody else wanna share um, experiences they've had or understanding the Lanterman Act or questions about how it all works. Um, we are just so grateful for your participation today. Brianne, not to put you on the spot, but you are just such a wonderful contributor to our community. Sure, I would be happy to share. Um, thanks, Sarah. So I work for an agency called 24 Hour Home Care and we are across the state of California. And when I used to work at our Tri-Counties Regional Center office, one of the families that I oversaw their case, um, sweetest family, loved working with them. They um, moved to Arizona um, because mom wanted a little bit of a change. And when she got out there, and tried to get regional center services for her daughter. Um, they were put on a wait list for 14 years and uh, quickly realized that unfortunately her daughter needed more supports than waiting for 14 years. And so they moved back to the city that I was at at the time um, and 
I was excited because it meant that I got to work with that family again. But unfortunately, you know, they really did want to leave California and they weren't able to get the support they needed. So it's just one more um, tangible example of a family that benefits from having the Lannerman Act. And I think um, sometimes those examples are good reminders as to how and why we're so lucky and blessed to have these kinds of services here. Thank you so much. Yeah. And Sarah, I'm not sure if you saw in the chat, but someone did share that they um, moved from South Dakota and they put a personal example in there that I think is worth maybe mentioning. Yes, I'm just noticing that. So a Teresa Nold shared that South Dakota has a few services in place, a choices program, community hope, opportunity, independence, career, employment success. That's what the choices mean. Also the Family Support 360. Family Support 360 serves people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. This program assists participants and their families in self-directing the services they need to live as independently as possible in the community. It's been slow going for us, a oh, for a family here in California, still slowly trying to understand services here. Um, my son is deaf with additional disabilities and is 24 years old. Well, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm not sure, but I'm wondering if in fact, you guys work with Far Northern Regional Center and- uh, Hi, Sarah, I'll just jump in for a second because I know Teresa and she's in the oh, Sacramento area. Oh, um, great. And, and I, Teresa, your experience is, is what you've experienced in the last year. And it is an incredible system to try to understand. And that's one great reason why, uh, you know, Sarah and Mary Agnes offer this training. Um, the Lannerman Act, the, the amazing thing about it is what it entitles you to, as Mary Agnes mentioned, is there's not supposed to be waiting lists, right? You're supposed to be able to access the services that you need. But in reality, there are sometimes budget issues and sometimes there are staffing issues. And right now we're having immense staffing issues, partly due to COVID, but also before that. So even though there is an entitlement, sometimes it is a challenge to get the services you need. And so um, advocacy and speaking up. And if you don't get an answer, call your service coordinator, call their supervisor. Um, you do have the right and, and you are entitled to get the services to support your loved one or yourself. Um, but sometimes you do have to you know, advocate. So um, don't, don't give up. Um, you know, call Sarah, call Mary Agnes, call myself or call your service coordinator and go up the chain if you need to at the regional center to get the supports that you need. Absolutely. And I, we just really appreciate any comments, uh, stories, um, even if they're not perfect, we need to know about them and we pay attention and we, and we wanna help facilitate services. Um, so thank you, Teresa, for sharing. And we're glad you're here. Um, I do wanna, I do wanna uh, give credit here to, Again, do I have my glasses on? I think so. Sometimes it's still hard to read. It looks like it's a, a journa, but she and we, many of us are aware of this really cool event that's happening in Reading, and it's to celebrate people with disabilities, developmental or acquired later in life. We will illuminate the Sundial Bridge in Reading, California this weekend. I've been hearing lots and lots about this, and uh, she even put the uh, Facebook link about the event. Um, sounds like an amazing, uh, amazing experience and event that will be happening. So uh, make sure if you're interested, you grab that link. So again, we want to uh, thank you for joining us today. We want to reiterate that if you have an interest in getting a copy of the PowerPoint, I'm going to put my email in one last time. And want you to know that uh, we welcome your contact, not just about the information today, oh, but if you have any questions at all about the service system. Um, one thing that Mary Agnes and I um, are working on is um, we plan on providing another training um, sometime in November um, on a review of the overall service system. 
And um, it can be, as you know, extremely complex, confusing. Um, so we are preparing for that presentation sometime in November. Of course, we will be putting out an information flyer. So stay tuned. Um, and again, we value feedback, questions. We are here to serve you. So with that, we wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you, have a good afternoon. Thank you so much. We'll keep it open for just a few minutes if people wanna grab some of those resources or if you wanna ask some questions. We'll hang out for a couple minutes. Thanks so much, Sarah, Sonia, and Mary Agnes. Appreciate it and look forward to the November. Uh, oh, yes. Well. And um, I did forward my the link uh, to, to myself and I'm gonna share that with my providers as well, just for a refresher. So thank you Wonderful. again. Thank you so much. Appreciate you being here. Me too as well, and seeing you guys. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Selene, I'm so happy you made it.